You know, every once in a while, a story breaks, and the details and information surrounding that story are ridiculous. However, sometimes these stories are tied to a celebrity, to an activist, or in this particular instance, an elected representative, and this story actually becomes an exercise not on the original initial facts, but on the people who go out of their way to run defense for that person, despite the fact that their story made no sense from the jump, their explanation is even more ridiculous than their initial action, and nobody outside a partisan brain in their right mind should believe what is being alleged by this person. And the example that we're going to go to today is is the Jamal Bowman story. For those of you who are unaware, on September 30th, Jamal Bowman was rushing to a congressional vote. There was a timetable. He approached a door that, by the way, most members of Congress are aware are closed on the weekends. It was a rare weekend session in Congress, and he intentionally and obviously pulled the fire alarm, but then it came out into the public and said, no, 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 I wasn't doing that. I wasn't trying to disrupt an official proceeding or stall for time for the Democrats, even though the Democrats wanted to stall for time on that particular vote, I pulled the fire alarm because I believed that fire alarm means door open machine, and that's why I pulled it. And even though this didn't make any sense on its face, even though Jamal Bowman is actually a middle school principal, so he knows that you're not supposed to pull fire alarms, for some reason, many in the left-wing media took to defending him, and I think it's important we talk about why. But before we do, thank you to everybody who signed up on actualjusticewarrior.com slash join. Oh, give me the money. Give You give me the money, okay? And thank you to the podcast listeners, Spotify, Apple, and Google's podcasting platform. Interesting moment uh, over the weekend when your New York colleague, Congressman Jamal Bowman, and he's under investigation for this now after Capitol Police say he pulled a fire alarm mm -hmm. in one of the House office buildings. Democrats were trying to delay a vote, a final vote on the bill. Uh, there he is uh, pulling the fire alarm. He says it was an accident. He thought pulling the alarm would open a door uh, based on the fact that the doors to his right there were locked and there was a sign that he said he was, con I think someone said it was confusing. I I'll be honest, uh, it doesn't really make sense to me, his explanation. So first and foremost, I got to give credit to Jake Tapper right there because in the setup to his question to Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, he says that he doesn't believe Bowman. His explanation makes no sense, which is the logical assertion to come to based on the facts even before the surveillance video has come out. Now, I'm going to show you the surveillance video so that you can see it for yourself because it makes it pretty damn clear that there was no confusion at all whatsoever related to Jamal Bowman and his explanation that he tried to pull the fire alarm in order to open this door because he was in a rush is clearly and obviously false, fictitious, and ridiculous. If you go to the surveillance video, what you can see right here is that there are two signs indicating something related to the door on the door. Now, a bunch of people are going to say throughout the course of this video that the signs were so confusing that Jamal Bowman could not figure out any interpretation from this other than to pull the fire alarm, and this was because he needed to get out those doors, but the thing is, Bowman tears down the signs and then goes to the fire alarm, yanks it, and never even tries to open the door. And that's not me saying this, that is shown to us on the video. Those are the doors right there. That's what Bowman said he was trying to open. That's what everybody started defending. That's why people were saying, oh yeah, you definitely pulled the fire alarm in order to do that, and here's him leaving in the opposite direction. Ironically, based on Marjorie Taylor Greene's video, that is the direction that you would actually go to if you were trying to find the doors that are open on the weekend. So everybody knew in Congress that Bowman was lying from the jump. Everyone who worked in this building knew that Bowman was lying from the jump, and anybody with common sense knew he was lying from the jump, but the video makes it so obvious now in hindsight that it kind of makes you wonder why the Capitol Police Police only released the still image of him at the fire alarm rather than releasing this initial video from the jump so you didn't have to have all these idiots fall on the sword for Jamal Bowman. Now first up on our list of professional idiots falling on the sword for Jamal Bowman is Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez who in response to Jake Tapper saying that this is absurd decided that she was going to go with this defense. 
Have you talked to him? What, what, yeah. What's going on? I there? mean, listen, I think if you actually do see some of the photos of the signs, I think there's there's something to be said about the government's about to shut down. There's a vote clock that's going down. The exits that are normally open in that building were suddenly closed. He so pulled a fire alarm. So I'm I'm what I am here to say is. So what I like about Alexandria Ocasio Cortez is that she's so not smart, not clever in the way that she speaks that she gives away exactly why Bowman did this intentionally in her attempted defense of Bowman doing this intentionally. She's like, oh, there was a clock and all these issues and oh my God, government shutdown and all that. And Jake Tapper cuts right through that and says, so you pull the fire alarm. And she immediately realizes that she has touched some lava. So she pivots away from that and she's going to move on to talk about Republicans. Now, she also goes with this conspiracy that people are putting forward about how the doors were suddenly closed. The exits that are normally open in that building were suddenly closed as if the republicans knew that jamal bowman was going to storm into the chamber and change the outcome of whatever stupid vote they were doing it was related to the continuing resolution therefore therefore they somehow closed these doors which obviously they don't have the authority to do as explained by marjorie taylor green and again it's hilarious that mtg of all people is one of the people who put out the most sensible response with that video that showed jamal bowman was lying beyond any shadow of a doubt these doors are closed on the weekends this is well known to representatives unless of course you're so lazy you're never in the office on any weekend and you never try to leave through this door so yeah it doesn't make any sense it never made any sense but Ocasio-Cortez is going to pivot to Republicans because the story is Jamal Bowman pulling the fire alarm to disrupt an official proceeding therefore how are Republicans bad and why are the Republicans pouncing on this he, so you pulled a fire alarm so i'm i'm what i am here to say is that house administration and u.s capitol police and jamal bowman are inactive and he's fully participating and saying there was a misunderstanding but what i do think is important to raise is the fact that republicans representatives like nicole maliotakis and others immediately moved to file motions to censure motions to expel before there before there has even been conversations that are that are finished to even see if there was a misunderstanding here but what they did do while they did that what they did not do was to commit to the same when george santos was actually found guilty after a thorough investigation of 13 federal charges he's indicted on everything from wire fraud to actual lying of, of House investigators, and they have been buddying up and giggling with him on the House floor. So this is the ultimate whataboutism, although I will acknowledge, and to be perfectly fair, that the fact that George Santos, of all people, is going after Jamal Bowman extra hard is kind of hilarious considering all the various allegations against him and i am a bit confused on what ocasio cortez is saying right here because in one breath she says he's convicted in another breath she says that he is indicted on these charges i know of the indictments but i do not believe as of right now he has been convicted on any of the charges related to those indictments i think what she's trying to say is that the house investigation found him at fault like they found that he lied to house investigators and therefore that has been resolved in the house but she doesn't make that distinction clear however i will say even though this is a distraction george santos is one of the funnier people going after jamal bowman based on his history and whatnot that being said a motion to censure totally fine with that he did something it clearly looks intentional for this purpose the idea that you have to go through this whole investigation which you should in order to figure out what he did was wrong is absurd but Ocasio-Cortez really undercuts her own credibility when she talks about how it was a moment of panic and this was just a rational thing to do because we all understand this was not a rational thing to do but to be fair to Ocasio-Cortez this was one of the less ridiculous defenses of Bowman and also she is a member of Congress in the Democratic caucus, so I understand why she is defending one of her own colleagues. I call it a stunt yet. There's going to be an investigation. <laughs> I know Jamal. And so again, I'm a little biased, but the doors that are normally open so that he could get to the chambers to read were somehow miraculously closed. So this is Sonny Hostin from The View. She's going to run defense for Jamal Bowman, but I do give her some credit up front. 
in that she admits that she is biased in favor of Jamal Bowman. However, she opens right off the bat with the conspiracy theory about how somehow the doors were closed, as if this was a setup. Basically, they tricked Jamal Bowman into pulling the fire alarm. Those dastardly Republicans, probably it's due to racism in her mind, because other than that, I don't understand the purpose of saying suddenly close. The doors are closed on the weekend. This happened on the weekend. It's not that hard to figure out. Anybody, if they actually wanted to know the answer to this question, could look into it. But the thing is, going for the conspiracy theory is far easier. So that's what Sonny Hostin does. That's what Ocasio-Cortez does. That's what everybody does who doesn't bother to look for an explanation when they assert a conspiracy. And it goes beyond this particular case. But it's really obnoxious in this particular case considering there is an easy explanation and other members of Congress are well aware of the fact that those doors are closed on the weekend. How did that happen? And so, yes, sometimes you're freaking but out I and you're in an elevator and you're pressing all the buttons. Was- also, this is stupid, too. If you're in the elevator and you're freaking out and you're trying to get to your floor, pressing all the buttons would not be a good idea. Now, if you were stuck in an elevator, you would pull the alarm button, but you wouldn't pull the alarm button assuming that it didn't trigger the alarm and thinking it would just randomly open the elevator door. So this is actually one of the worst explanations right there, but Whoopi's going to double down on it because stupid loves company and Whoopi will never resist the opportunity to jump on the dumb bandwagon. Thing. It goes okay. to them not having the time. It is quite possible that he was trying to get there and, and, the, and the door not panic but you know if you're not looking because it's a door that's normally open you just go and you press a button so i don't know who this woman is right there but i do love the fact that they cut to her reaction shot and she's smirking because this is ridiculous and her face says it all in the midst of these ridiculous explanations now to be clear sunny admitted her bias that bias goes double for Whoopi goldberg but they would never obviously in a million years run this level of a defense for a more reasonable action by a Republican. This is all 100% about them being in the tank for Democrats, and I wish they would just admit that. I wish they would just say that. I wish they would just speak that out loud, even though we got the mention of the bias early. I want them to own up to the fact that they know this is nonsense. They back this up because they're team Democrat now that the video is out and it's undeniable, and they're kind of embarrassed of their own actions. But the thing is, there's no consequences for this. There's no consequences for forwarding these obvious lies and absurdities because this is what is expected. You know, it's fire alarm. Like, I'm so scared of the fire. I I don't know. Again, she can't resist right there. She says, not the fire alarm. And you notice another person on this panel right there, the woman with the blonde hair, is also laughing. This is because even on a panel like The View, that is completely absurd, tilted in favor of the Democrats to the extreme. They can't stomach the fact that this is actually being said. They can't, with a straight face, sit next to these two people who are obviously lying. And the fact that Whoopi Goldberg described this as a button when it's a fire alarm, you actually pull it down, makes no sense at all. And that's why they're actually laughing in her face. And again, with the video out now definitively, it is proven to be true that Whoopi Goldberg and Sonny Hostin are ridiculous. And by the way, they're lying. They know the difference between a fire alarm and a door opener button on one of those push doors. Because I don't know what it, I haven't seen the fire alarm button, so I don't fire. know. Yeah, I don't know. It wasn't I don't, like fire exit only sign. <laughs> it was like no, active. because you have to break glass to press the, to get to the button. I mean, look at these two girls making fun of Whoopi Goldberg right now. They're saying it probably said fire. You have one girl doing the motion that you pull it down. And Whoopi saying, I haven't seen the fire button saying that it's a button. We know it's not a button, Whoopi. You're a joke. You're being ridiculous and absurd right here. You're making no sense at all. And again, in hindsight, that the video makes it so obvious that Bowman intentionally did this, it's extra funny that she's trying to make all these extra arguments. But get a load of these other additional made-up facts from Whoopi Goldberg that are now going to be debunked, not just by these two women on the panel, but by the producers actually showing images of this in real time as Whoopi Goldberg is lying. It was like, no, because you have to break glass to press the to get to the button. So I, don't I don't know. I don't know. It seems pretty fire alarm to me. I don't know. It just looks like a button. I can't see the button. I think well, he could. He was a little closer. So Whoopi Goldberg just makes up that you have to break glass in order to get to the fire alarm. What a horrible fire alarm that would be if you had to break glass and potentially cut yourself 
if there was a fire, but the producers actually put it up on screen, and you could see for yourself, this is a standard fire alarm that you would find in any middle school in New York. Jamal Bowman knows exactly what it is. There's no glass around it, and no, it is not, in fact, a button. So the producers are even against Sonny Hostin and Whoopi Goldberg right here, because what they're saying is so ridiculous and patently absurd that it defies all logic. But the thing is, when we go to defying all logic, we go one step further because it's one thing to say, look, members of Congress, of course, they're going to be biased if they're Democrats. You know what? The view, they're in the tank for the Democratic Party, but the alternative media, they're better than that. The rational actual people on the media who don't stand by party lines or mainstream narratives, they're going to give you a better slice of the story. But the thing is, no, they don't because Cenk Uger's explanation of this, his denial of this is worse and more over the top than even the one presented on The View or by Ocasio-Cortez put together. So if you're that deeply biased, be gone, okay? But for the rest of you, I, I'm gonna <clears throat> defend J Jamal Bowman on the actual charge. When I first saw this, I thought to myself, I didn't, I didn't know the defense at all. And I thought, man, that is awfully strange. Why the hell did he do that? And I was really, frustrated in my mind because I couldn't think of any reason why you'd pull the fire alarm. And then I thought, you know, he was a principal. Is this some sort of thing about like, you know, in a school kids pull fire alarms if you're in an emergency? Did he think that? Then I read the explanation and the explanation makes perfect sense. That's right. Jank goes even more extreme. He says, when I first heard this story, I was like, why would you pull the fire alarm? That's ridiculous. And you know, maybe I thought to myself, you know, Jamal Bowman used to be a principal. So maybe there is something about schools, you know, for kids to pull the fire alarm in order to open the emergency exit. Maybe maybe that's how schools work in, in New York. Now I went to school in New Jersey. It's right across the river. Chances are they had a similar system and similar looking fire alarms. I mean, this looks the exact same as every fire alarm in every movie and in New York schools and New Jersey schools, but you know, maybe maybe Jamal Bowman as a principal, he he had some inside knowledge. Then I read his explanation and it, and it made perfect sense. It, it just it just it blew my mind how sensible it is. Jank goes above and beyond the view. He goes above and beyond Ocasio Cortez. And what's even greater about this is what Jank says about the naysayers, which I can't wait until we get to. So put up that picture again, okay? So, and this is exactly the type of mistake I'd make and you guys can judge me for it if you like to. So he gets to a door which normally opens for members like him. He's late to getting to a vote. He's trying to figure it out and he reads the sign, emergency exit only. Push until alarm sounds, three seconds. It makes it sound like, don't worry, the alarm's only gonna sound for three seconds. Then door will unlock in 30 seconds. It's an instruction manual on what to do with the alarm so that the door opens. At a bare minimum, the world's worst sign. The dumbest, craziest sign I've ever seen, right? No, Jenk, not right. In fact, I can tell by your body language that you know that you're not telling the truth right now because you're nodding your head no as you're giving this explanation, which is a subconscious indicator that you know that this is nonsense. Here's what that sign means because it's written in plain English. This is an emergency exit. It is to be opened in emergencies. When you press down on this door for three seconds, the alarm is going to go off, indicating that there's an emergency and the door should open within 30 seconds. Everybody understands that's what it means. It has that little rectangle thing that you press down on it. This is obvious. This is clear. This is sensible. It does not say go over to the wall and pull the thing that says fire, the obvious fire alarm, in order to open this door. You don't push the fire alarm you pull the fire alarm. So Jenk, what the hell are you talking about? Also, Jamal Bowman ripped down these signs. He took them down himself. So he took down the visual indicators that that was an emergency exit only, which explained perfectly why he couldn't go through that door. So you could say, hey, Jenk, you're a knucklehead. That doesn't mean pull the fire alarm. I don't know which alarm it's referring to. Okay, fine, guilty as charged. That I would, I'm telling you right now, I probably would have done the same thing. And so, is it embarrassing? It's it's super embarrassing because if you think about it for a second, yeah, it's a fire alarm. Of course, don't pull the fire alarm. What alarm are they talking about? Why isn't the door working? But he's rushing 
to the vote. Jake, I'm going to give you more credit than that and say, no, you wouldn't. You're lying right now. You're over the top in your lying right now. And you would absolutely not pull the fire alarm. Push, again, meaning the door that you push out. Everybody understands this. People read English. Jamal Bowman's not an idiot. And again, he would expel people for pulling the fire alarm in a middle school in a similar situation. So guys, we're going to have definitive evidence and the Capitol Police should uh, release this video because they've only released a picture, right? So show us a video. If he goes and he just pulls the fire alarm, then I'm wrong. No, he meant to pull the fire alarm, etc. If he's looking around, reading a sign, looking confused, and then pulls the fire alarm, then you'll know that he was telling the truth. So release the video and let's be done with this insanity. So yeah, we do have the video out there and it shows definitively that Bowman pulled the fire alarm. Can't wait for your retraction on this ridiculous statement and how Jamal Bowman didn't understand and how the sign was confusing when it couldn't be more clear. In fact, it was so clear that Bowman ripped down the signs, then pulled the fire alarm as he intended to do, then walked away a completely different direction and never even tried to open the door. Not after 10 seconds, not after three seconds, not after 30 seconds. Now look, that's Jenks explanation. It's totally over the top and ridiculous, even more crazy than Sonny Hostin and Whoopi Goldberg of The View and Ocasio-Cortez and most of the takes that I've seen on the internet. But what I find absolutely wonderful about Jenk in particular is that he has to go extra hard because he's on the internet and he wants you to know that he's a fighter and he's a tough guy because Jenk actually says that this shows Republican bias. Think about what you just heard. Think about the absurdities that Jenk put forward. He said this was the worst sign in the history of ever because he's so biased in favor of Bowman that he's looking for any way to bend over backwards to excuse it for him. So yeah, Jamal Bowman did this intentionally. It appears he was trying to disrupt a congressional proceeding, which is a charge that some people on January 6th were in fact charged with, convicted of, and sent to jail for. If you're expecting him to get a similar charge even, you're definitely wrong. It's never going to happen. Even if he was charged, it would be symbolic and he'd never be convicted. And if I'm being perfectly honest, him pulling the fire alarm to disrupt this vote is not as significant, obviously, as the January 6th riots as a whole. But if I were a defendant and I got charged and I was just somebody who got tricked into going into the building, you know, it was open or whatever, I didn't do any damage or any rioting, and I tried to leave as soon as possible, basically only should have been charged with trespassing, and I got charged up to disrupting an official proceeding, I would be really angry right now sitting in jail as Jamal Bowman gets to walk scot-free and has a bunch of idiots lining up to defend him. So yeah, the story is hilarious first and foremost, more so for the coverage, but I want to know what you guys think about it down in the comments below. Was Jamal Bowman so confused he pulled the fire alarm and ran in the opposite direction in his intent to open up this door, or is the video proof positive that he's definitely lying? Let me know what you think down in the comments below. If you liked the video, show them by leaving a like, subscribe for more content, follow me on my social media, support me via the support links in the description of this video. This has been me talking about the Bowman video. Till next time.